Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and as most of you already know, when you want to manipulate the DOM on your page using JavaScript, you first need to retrieve the elements in which you want to manipulate before you start writing that code. So today's video is all going to be about one of the most powerful uh, JavaScript DOM methods and it is of course query selector and query selector all. Now most of you will probably already know how to use query selector and you know what it does but this video is going to focus on some of the things that you may um, not be aware when it comes to the the query selector and the query selector all method. So let's have a look at how we can select elements out of this or out of these two tables using these methods. So going inside VS Code right here, I've got the two tables. I've got uh, one called success table and one called failure table. All right, so heading down inside the JavaScript section, let's begin by covering some basics. We're going to be selecting these elements. So Right here, I can say const success table equal to document.querySelector. Then of course, pass through something like success dash table. And of course, using the dot here, this means get me the class and query selector is going to return the first instance of this particular class on the document. And again, I'm sure most of you know how this works already. I'm just going to duplicate this line and also say um, failure table to of course get the one for the failure table. So this is the most basic usage of of your query selector and of course it is going to return null if it can't find the uh, the element which matches the selector that you pass through. So now moving on to the more interesting part when it says query selector the selector part of that method name is actually quite important because it refers to essentially your CSS selectors. So this means that almost anything if not everything that you can provide in CSS as a selector or group of selectors you can also uh, provide that to query selector and query selector all. So let's have a look at how we can select every odd entry within the success table. So we can see here I have, um, you know, all of these table rows. Okay. So let's get every odd table row as part of this first success table. So going down here, we can make a new constant called odd success is equal to then say document.querySelector all to of course select multiple um, elements in this case. I'm then going to say just right here uh, success table okay then say uh, tr then colon nth dash child okay then pass through here odd. All right so what's happening here is there's actually two things happening. First off, we're starting with the success table. This is much like CSS. This is your parent element and you want to select every child under that parent and of course use a space to um, you know, signify that you want a child of the success table. Then once you've you know, chosen your table rows here, you're then saying, look, actually I want to get every odd table row as part of this success table. So two things going on there. Firstly, we're getting a child, a, a descendant uh, selector. We're also, of course, getting every odd one. So now if I was to console.log what the odd success is, okay, I'll save this, go back in the browser here. We can see we get two elements back, expanding it. We get the first table row. That is, of course, the you know number one in the uh, list of rows. One is an odd number. Then the second one is the third row. Of course, three is also an odd number. So we can see there that essentially all I'm trying to say is you can pass in your standard CSS selectors. This includes your pseudo classes and your um, any descendant um, selectors and things like that. And it's all going to work perfectly fine. Now, it's also quite powerful in that you can also provide uh, attribute selectors as well. So let's actually get rid of this, uh, this constant line and make a new constant called selected row is equal to, and now we're going to be selecting essentially the selected row 
using a data attribute. So we can see here that I'm using data dash selected equal to true. And this is just put in here as an example. Let's say for example, uh, your JavaScript chooses this row to be your row. So it highlights it in a different color or something like that. But the point is, we've got this attribute on this row, we can select that using the query selector method. So hopping right down here, we can say selected row is equal to document.querySelector, then say here, I wanna select the table row, then using square brackets here, okay, you wanna say data dash selected. So this right here is gonna select the table row with the data dash selected attribute on it. You can also get more specific. You can say is equal to true and actually test against the value as well. So I might do that right now. So going back up here, we can say, of course, I've got data selected equal to true. So we should see this row come back in the console. If I console.log the selected row, I'll save this, go back in the browser here, and we do in fact get that row B uh, selected using that method. So. This also applies to CSS as well. Um, you can use the square bracket uh, notation like this to select an attribute. Um, but yeah, look, like I said, with this data dash selected, it's likely that your JavaScript code is manipulating, um, you know, uh, data attributes and things of that nature. So it might come in handy there. Um, and just quickly too, this also applies for standard attributes. So for example, you can select every anchor tag with an href. You can just type href inside here and it's also gonna work. So it not only applies to data attributes, but also standard attributes. Cool. Moving on now to the last part of this video and that is gonna be the fact that the query selector and query selector all methods can be called on individual elements themselves and not just the document. And this here I find comes in handy quite often because you might have multiple different uh, you know, instances of a element on the page or a parent element on the page. And you want to, of course, restrict your selection to that scope of that element. So a perfect use case would be this right here where we've got two tables on the page and I only want the tables, or sorry, the rows that are part of the success uh, table. So let's hop down here. We saw it earlier by using the success table, then space, then row. You can do that as well. But this here uh, is definitely safer in the, uh, you know, um, in, in that you're, you're definitely, you're, you're, you're specifying um, which is your parent element. So let's hop right up here. I'm just gonna say here, I'll say const success rows equal to success table dot query selector all. So we can see here, I'm now calling this on the success table explicitly, whereas previously it was on the document. So now I'm gonna say here, let me select every single TR or table row as part of the success table. If I was to log this one out here, I'll save it, go back in the browser and refresh. Or we can see here, we have all of the table rows being logged out. So we're restricting it to the scope of that success table. Now, real quickly, I want to change this to be document just to further demonstrate that if you call it on document, you just change one thing here and, um, you know, now you get all seven back. So that's the powerful, sorry, that's that's what's powerful about um, calling it on there. You're guaranteeing you're only gonna get the items inside that particular scope slash parent element. Cool, so that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.